Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV, a weekly show highlighting Standard & Poor's analysis and global perspective on the latest credit market developments. I'm Jeff Sexton for Standard & Poor's Financial Institutions Ratings. Today I'm joined by Matt Carroll, Director in Standard & Poor's Insurance Ratings. We'll be discussing the overall health and outlook for commercial real estate and what this may mean for a number of sectors. Welcome, Matthew, and thank you for joining us. Hi. Thanks, Jeff. Matt, let's start off uh, talking about the key drivers for commercial real estate. What are they in our view, and what's the outlook for them? Sure. Well, really, the two overarching drivers that we look at across all property types would be uh, vacancy rates as well as uh, rental rates. Broadly, no surprise to anyone, vacancies have been relatively high given the uh, the downturn in the economy, and of course, rental rates have suffered consequently as well. But drilling down a little bit by, by property type, uh, we do see uh, different trends uh, based on, on the property types that we look at. Hotels have actually been the most rapid to recover. Um, if you think about revenue per available room as being the key driver there, that, not surprisingly, that's probably the most economically sensitive segment of the economy. And as business travel has resumed and people have started to go on vacations again, we've seen the most rapid recovery in, in hotels. On the other end of the spectrum, we continue to view office space as being the particular laggard across uh, property types. Office, of course, is particularly sensitive to payrolls and the unemployment picture, but we also recognize uh, regional variations. Uh, we would note that central business districts, particularly in New York City and Washington, D.C., have fared significant, significantly better than national averages. Uh, other key property types we look at, industrials, retail, multifamily, have suffered from similar trends um, as, as the economy um, went through its, its cycle. But that being said, um, you know, we are starting to see some signs of life in retail. And even industrials are starting to benefit a little bit from pickups in uh, production, uh, manufacturing utilization capacity indicators have improved. And in particular, we've actually seen uh, pickups in, in port cities that have benefited from a, a pickup in exports, possibly tied to the weakness in the dollar. And, and really, the last property segment that we've we look at as multifamily, and that overall has been the most stable of the property types because, after all, even with the housing crisis, people still need some place to live. Um, you mentioned the economy before. Um, naturally, commercial real estate is very sensitive to the economy. There's been a number of signs in the economy uh, that would bode well, signs of improvement. Um, can you talk about the macroeconomic trends that we're watching and what they could mean for commercial real estate? Yep. Some of the, the biggest overarching macro themes that we look at are, are GDP, inflation, interest rates, and unemployment. The first three are trending relatively favorably for uh, from a commercial real estate point of view. We are seeing uh, slow but positive growth in GDP. Um, at the same time, interest rates remain relatively low and inflation is in check. Uh, the one key outlier in the biggest drag remains unemployment, which has uh, impacts across most property types. Um, so moving on to um, the last few years have been very bad for commercial real estate. Um, how have other sectors, in particular the insurance companies, the banks, the REITs, been affected by this downturn uh, in commercial real estate? Yeah, I, I would have to say that all three of those industries that you mentioned are weathering the storm. Uh, taking them one at a time, the, the banks, certainly commercial real estate is, uh, is a problem, but we think that the worst is over and now behind us. Um, banks we view as being generally well reserved for uh, commercial real estate potential additional losses in that uh, area and we don't expect to see too many uh, additional downgrades as a result of commercial real estate specific issues there. Uh, turning next to the life insurance side of the, the equation, the, the insurance industry came into the recent downturn very well capitalized and we implemented a series of incremental asset stress tests across the life insurance industry, and we believe at a stress level commensurate with a, a single A level rating that the industry has uh, a, a, a 
an appropriate capital buffer to deal with a, a wide range of economic losses, including commercial real estate. Uh, and, and that said, uh, losses to date through the cycle have been uh, well inside of uh, single A stress expectations. So there continues to be a buffer there. And, and then lastly, uh, turning over to REITs, uh, REITs we recently went to a stable outlook as we did for the life insurance sector as well. And there the overall fundamentals in, in the REIT, REIT sector um, are, are supportive of that sector outlook. And, and one thing we would note is that REITs tend to have better metrics than commercial real estate on the whole, owing to the relatively higher quality uh, property types that have been acquired by the REITs. Very interesting. Um, looking forward now, Matt, where do the challenges and risks for commercial real estate that we'll be watching closely lie? Yeah, I think that goes back to some of the key macro uh, drivers that we talked about earlier, the, the key one being uh, un unemployment. Um, we're going to continue to be very watchful of payroll trends. Um, you know, a double dip recession with uh, an increase in uh, unemployment, though not our expected case if it were to occur, would be, uh, would be very troubling. Um, and I suppose the other uh, more industry-specific factor that we'd be looking at is, is the wave of refinancings that are coming up over the next several years and monitoring the market's capacity to, uh, to absorb those refinancings. So on, a, on the whole, we'll have some macroeconomic trends we'll be monitoring as well as some industry-specific trends. Um, but overall, this is an area that we'll keep an eye on. And on that note, I'd like to thank Matthew Carroll for joining us today for Standard & Poor's Credit Matt at TV. Thanks, Seth. And from all of us here at Standard & Poor's, thank you and take care.